was happening as your as the universal was becoming bigger and bigger? Was there something in there that made you want to start your own label after having been at DreamWorks? And was, was that a, oh, yeah. in play? Um, yeah, when, when DreamWorks was merged back into the Universal Music Group, and I was over uh, DreamWorks and MCA Mercury doing promotion, it became smaller. And what I mean by that is James Stroud at DreamWorks allowed all of us to really be involved in all facets of the business. You know, James was a producer and one of the best producers of, of country music of all time. And he loved being in studio. And he also had a great vision for the company. But he gave me a lot of leeway and a lot of rope to learn these other things, to learn about marketing and publicity and to represent the label in a lot of places. And so when we got back to Universal Music Group, it was, okay, now you're going to just do this. And it's like, all right, well, I'll do just this until the end of my contract, and then I'm going to do something else. And, you know, Luke Lewis and, and James Stroud wanted me to stay and continue to do promotion, and uh, I made the decision that sink or swim, I've got to go try my own label. So it was, there was, there was a very specific moment in 2004, when I walked out of Luke Lewis's office and I said, I'm out. I can't be part of this. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that, I'm not seeing, I'm not learning anymore. And we're not expanding anymore. So, let's go. How do, how do you set that up? How do you go well, I've been, I mean, very, you know, for all that I knew at the time, you know, I started writing a prospectus. And I call it my master's thesis. It's about 120 pages of see change of why we should, why we shouldn't, why you should invest, why you shouldn't invest, in a very specific, and, and what, you know, I worked with some people in town to put together a very serious big boy proposal and prospectus. And uh, we started shopping around. And, you know, we, we had a real vision and an aggressive goal for what we thought we might be able to do. And, you know, I thought I was gonna have to wait until September of 2005. Well, when I met, uh, uh, I'll try to make this make sense chronologically. I met Taylor November 2nd of 2004. By then, I already had my whole label idea in place. And I was still at Universal when I got her package. And, you know, I got a call from her manager at the time and said, hey, did you get this package? I said, yes, I did. I said, what do you think? I said, I think it's pretty good. And they said, well, we're going to be in town doing meetings next Tuesday, can we meet with you? And I put the phone on hold for a second, pick back up, I said, yeah, come by at 7 p.m. Because <laughs> I knew that everybody else would be gone, besides me and my assistant, and maybe John Zarling. And uh, they came in and I was infatuated immediately. And so I went and met with the family at a couple meetings, and I said, here's the deal. If you want to be at the Universal Music Group, I can introduce you to the other executives and the a and department, and we can see if we can get you signed there. But I'm not gonna be there in a year. I'm leaving to start my own label. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I don't have investors yet. I don't know who will distribute it, but I promise you one thing. If you wait, I promise you a record deal. And they looked at me like I was crazy, <laughs> said goodbye, and uh, thought, well, you know, I've gotta put it out there. So Taylor herself called me about 10 days later on my cell phone, she goes, Hey, Scott, it's Taylor. <laughs> I'm like, hi, Taylor, how are you? And we talked about school for a little bit. And she goes, hey, I just want you to know I've made up my mind and I'm waiting for you. Like, wow, this is on. And so I thought we were going to have to wait until September. And uh, I met with Luke and James in January. They wanted me to stay at that point because they knew that I had other desires. <laughs> 